what we're going to do is use databases that are dedicated to influenza or COVID. So that means you don't have the problems of needing to use BLAST because all of the things that you need to find have already been found by somebody and put in one place. You don't need to find out what an unidentified gene which happens to be a particular open reading frame is because they're already defined. We're using genomes that are really well explored and characterized. Nobody can have messed up the annotation for them. Everything has got to be fairly easy to do. So there are three main databases. So let's open in new tab, open in new tab, and open in new tab. So the first one is the influenza virus resource at the NCBI. So this is the front page for searching through the databases. You could search by their unique identifiers in the database, but if you knew what they were, probably you don't want to be searching the database. So no, you don't need to do that. You can blast against this database if you want to, but we don't usually need to because we can search against things which have been correctly named for once. So the first thing you need to do is tell it which type of influenza do you want to look at? A, B or C? Now we're going to look at A. The next thing you need to do is tell it which animal host did you see the virus in? You can get in blowflies, really? Interesting. Uh, let's go for cats because I'm feeling like being mean on cats. So I've picked cats. Next, you can pick whichever country or region you want. So you can have the Northern Hemisphere, the Southern, oh, okay. They've changed it. Northern temperate, Southern temperate or tropical. Sensible, but they hadn't done this until recently. Let's look at cats in Northern temperate regions. Now, the next thing is it asks you which one of the proteins do you want to look at? Remember I said within uh, the influenza genome, it's segmented and it contains eight genes, uh, which actually code for a bit more than that in terms of proteins. So you can pick the individual proteins. So the two most important are HA, which is hemagglutinin, and NA, which is neuraminidase. So let's go for the hemagglutin. We usually go for H, it's easier. Now, I could click any. If I do that, I'll download all of the different segments for that particular, uh, for the search that I do. Now, that's not really a good idea. The process that we're going to do next week is sequence alignment. So it's putting sequences together to compare them, work out their evolution, and to work out how they're changing. If I try to align hemagglutin to neuraminidase, these are two completely different proteins. It's like comparing an, an enzyme to a transcription factor. They're different things. They're apples and oranges. You have to always have a set of data which is homologous. It only homogeneous, sorry. It only contains one set of things. So you don't want to ever click on any. Don't know why it's really a function. Because if you do, you'll get all of those downloaded at the same time. And then you have to write a piece of software which will separate them into different distinct files. You don't want to be doing that. It's a lot of hard work. So you click on HA. So that will download just the hemagglutinins from cats in the northern temperate region. Now the next thing. It asks you which one of the hemagglutinins you want. Remember I said about subtypes of flu? So you have H1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to H18. So we can stick on HNE because I don't think there's going to be many cat samples. 
So the question I'm going to ask in this particular case is, which strains of flu have been isolated from cat? So which one of the H1s to 18 can you find in cats? And similarly, I've got, I've got 11 ends. So N1 to 11, I can pick any ends. So I'm gonna find out which subtypes of flu can be found in cats. The next box is uh, you can't use to start with unless you know the length of your gene. You need to use these later because they allow you to get rid of anything which is only a partial sequence. So sometimes they put things in the database which instead of being the entire, let's say 1,400 nucleotides is 400 because they just sequenced enough to know what that particular hemagglutinin was. So they sequenced the unique bit that makes H1 different to H2 to H3 or whatever. But they didn't do the whole lot because they couldn't be bothered. You don't want that because it messes up your studies. So you want to make sure that you specify a minimum length which is close to the length you want it to get. You can also specify a maximum. I can't think of any reason why you'd ever want to do that. So you can click on full length only or you can have full length plus. So full length plus will have um, the untranslated regions either side of the gene. You can specify dates that you want to collect it uh, and release date, but let's not worry about that. So if you wanted to know what flu was circulating in cats between 2010 and 2020, you could do that. I don't think there's going to be so many hits that I need to put that restriction on, so I'm not going to. And I'm not going to click on. The problem is that that is exactly where you want to submit and do the thing kind of uh, investigation. Now, you can pick protein, you can pick the protein coating region, or you can pick the nucleotide as the output that comes from it. Let's leave with it with protein at the minute. You can collapse identical sequences. If you do that for protein, that will collapse a lot more than if you do for nucleotide because of all these same code, synonymous codons. Uh, what happens if I, what other queries can I add? Oh, I can do multiple queries at the same time. No, let's just do one at a time. Right. So let's do show results. Now, notice when you're doing the download of the results, you can specify Protein, the coding region, nucleotide as fast there, or you can just have an accession list, or you can have a CSV file with a list of the names of them. And the other thing you can do is customize the default def line. So remember at the top of a faster file, well, not remember because you haven't seen the slides that I've made and all the videos I've made to do with uh, databases. But anyway, they're there. Faster format has a top line which has a greater than symbol and then it has various other things on it. So what you need to do is specify all the things on here that you need to know for doing your particular project and study. So for example, this has not got host in it. You need to have host. You need to know which organism. So in this case, they're all coming from cat. So you should say cat every single time. The other, you don't need to know seg name because they're all going to be hemagglutinin because you're only searching for hemagglutinin. Uh, the other thing you need to do is know strain. You want to have at the end, really, because it's a load of gobbledygook, which is dependent on how it was written by the uh, person who deposited the file. You need to know the accession, the year, the month. You probably want to know the location Where's location? Is there a location? So there's country. You want to know the host it's in and you want to know the subtype. So in this case, it's called serotype. So you know if it's an H1 or whatever else. Now you want to set that to remember changes so it will always do that for you. And then show the results. So do the search. 
that's what I thought. Not going to turn out a lot of cat sequences. So in total, across all the different types of flu, there are 14 protein sequences. They are either 568 or 566 uh, long. If they're 568, they come from H5. If they're 566, they come from either H1 or H3. You found them in Australia, Russia, France, Germany, the USA, China, South Korea, and you can look at their years. What is this telling you about cats and influenza? Or well, what's it telling you that they're not likely to be? Yeah, you can't tell for sure, but potentially they're not. As you've not detected in over a large period of time, they're just sporadic. You're occasionally seeing cases so in 2006, 9, 6, and you're seeing not consistently one particular type. So you're seeing sometimes H5, sometimes H1, sometimes H3. So these are sporadic infections. What you're not getting is cat to cat transmission of the virus. These are happening because they are in contact with something that's got the virus. The only time when that might not be true is this in 2010. But it, and I mean, it can't transmit particularly well between cats because if you look here, there's only three in this cluster and two in this cluster. If COVID, so when we originally found COVID, we didn't know whether it was doing human to human transmission. So localized transmission and within species transmission. So if it's not within species transmission, you have to be exposed to the vector or the source to get the disease. So it's not a big problem. You just avoid the thing that spread that has that infection. If it's got community transmission, then you have a bit of a problem because it can spread through that entire community very quickly, as we found with COVID. So there's very little evidence here because of the way we've got sporadic cases that there is transmission through uh, the community. Uh, you've got three in the US of H1N1. If you look here, this one is from Iowa, this one's from Oregon, and this one's from Pennsylvania. There's no cat that's going to have a sneeze that goes from Iowa to Oregon or from Oregon to Pennsylvania. That's not happening. So these are sporadic and they've caught it off. The H1N1 is probably off uh, their owners. The H5 ones, probably because they ate an infected bird. And the H3 ones are probably from their owners having H3N2, because that's a, the common circulating form of the virus. Right, so if I want to download it, I just click on the download button, and I've got that customized faster thing. So I download, and I wait, it should be pretty fast. So it's downloaded a file called faster.fa. If I go to my downloads thing, here's faster.fa. I can edit it with notepad so I can have a look at it. So here are the sequences. So first, that's all 14 sequences in one file. Now I can do things with this. So this one's a Russian cat from Dagestan. And that's the particular sequence. There are the other particular sequences. And it's got all the information I wanted. So date of collection, so it's a unique code. And it's got the date, which is run into the unique code. So I need a space in that, ideally. And it's got a country, host, subtype, 
and this is as i said the strain name so the strain name in the database is a cat austria 649 2006 and this one is a cat dagestan the problem with strain names is they can have all different sorts of formats so here you've got a cat or 29 whatever it is 2009 so it doesn't tell you the country in there whereas it did tell you france and what are the country in the other ones it's because these ones come from u.s states and so tell you that particular uh, u.s state the chinese ones will tell you the chinese region so this one's from sichuan sometimes they're particularly tricky and just give you the name of the city so if you don't know your geography you're sitting there going well i've got no idea where the hell that is so you have to go back to wikipedia and find your maps and find your locations to figure out where everything's coming from 